Hello everyone, I'm with this side from JTech Networks. So today we are going to see the Wireshark. Okay, today we are going to start the Wireshark class. Okay, so basically today we will be going to see what is Wireshark. Okay, how to use or like get familiar with the interface of the Wireshark and uh, who can do this course and the page request tree to do this course. Okay, so first we will see the introduction. Let me write this. And then we will see, so what do you understand by Wireshark? See, basically Wireshark is an open source cross-platform program or tool that is used to capture and analyze network traffic. Okay, so Wireshark is an open source, powerful cross-platform, okay, and it is used for to, to capture and analyze network traffic. So what is the means of open source here? Okay, so as you all know, what is open source? So basically open source means the source, the, the source code of the tool is available for us. We can read it, we can modify it, and we can contribute to the source code. Okay, and then we can use it for free. Okay, so we have three types of softwares, open source, freeware, as well as paid. Okay, so open source means the software that uh, the source code are, uh, is available on the and on any like platform and uh, we can modify the source code we can continue to the source code freeware means the source the tool which is available for free but we cannot see the source code or or we cannot modify the source code like win windows 10 okay and paid it's like uh, it is paid okay we have to pay for the for for, for to use it okay so Wireshark is an open source. That is why Wireshark is so powerful. The large there is a large community of the Wireshark to stop and to contribute to the source code of the Wireshark. That is why Wireshark is very powerful. Okay, because of because of its nature of open source. So it it is cross platform. What is the means of cross platform here? So we have cross platform. Means we can use it it in any OS. Like we can use it in Windows. We can use it in Mac and Linux. Okay. Then we have it is used for see Vaishar the main purpose or the main motto or the main motive of the Vaishar is to capture the packets. Okay, and then analyze the packets. That's it. Okay, the capture the traffic and analyze the whole traffic. So basically, what is the request tree for uh, doing this course for doing Vaisha. Basically CCNA okay you have to do the CCNA okay for learning the Vaisha to move to the Vaisha because networking is very important for learning the Vaisha. So CCNA is very important okay so the pre-request tree is only CCNA not CCMB or CCIE just CCNA you are aware about the networking fundamentals the foundations and the all the advanced topics of the CCNA. That's it. Okay. And uh, now guess what? Who can do this course? So basically, this course is for uh, the network administrators, the network security engineers, and the application developers. Okay. So this course is for the network administrators. This course is for the network engineers. Okay. Security engineers. As well as this is for the application developers and uh, etc. Okay, and any student can do this course, but the basic uh, knowledge is like you have to grab the all the concept concept of the CCNA. Okay, so basically, Wireshark is a general purpose. It means we can use it anywhere. Like Wireshark can we use in networking platform? Wireshark can we use in security platforms? And Vaisha can be used in application platforms. Okay, like in security, you can perform, you can like analyze a whole network. Like if there is some malware inside your network, you can perform malware analysis with the help of Vaisha. Okay, you can find out where is the malware is coming from. Okay, the malware file, etc. 
in in the network you can help you can troubleshoot your whole net entire network like uh, whether your server is slow whether your application is slow okay or there's an error in some protocols so we can find out so why shark is used in troubleshooting in analyze the whole network in malware analysis in application application development like uh, if you if you uh, if you want to find out that uh, the, your application is slow or there's a, some kind of error in your application protocols or if you want to implement some protocols inside your application then you can use wireshark okay so wireshark is a open source and it is a general purpose you can use it in like in many domains okay then the main motto of wireshark is to analyze and capture the packets okay now what what are packets like uh, so these all concept can be clear in ccna so first the prerequisite is to to, uh, to do ccna and then you can move to wireshark then wireshark is an open source so where's the source code of the wireshark so it is available at this website okay get left copy this and then so basically get left is similar to github okay so here you can see the source code of the wireshark you can read it you can modify it okay even you can contribute like if you want to change some features or if you want to add some more features in the wireshark you can add it okay so let me read so the language in which wireshark is made up of is c c plus plus and lua okay so if you want to modify the source code or if you want to contribute to the Wireshark source, source code, so you have to be aware about these languages like C, C++, and Lua. Okay. Then, Wireshark is a GUI based. Okay. So we can operate the operating system with the help of GUI and then CLI. Okay. GUI means graphical mm -hmm. user interface and CLI means command line interface. So you can operate the Wireshark. So by basically Wireshark is a GUI based. Okay. And for the CLI, what else we have for the CLI? Like if you want to capture the packets on the remote PC or on the remote server. So what else we can use? So we can use T Shark in place of Wireshark. Okay. So T Shark is a CLI based tool. Okay, basically, Wireshark is a GUI and T-Shark is a CLA. This is one more tool, TCP dump. Okay, this is also a, uh, like it is also a copy of the T-Shark or we can say that uh, T-Shark is the copy of the TCP dump. So both are similar in many ways. Like uh, they have in, they have like commands in common. Okay, so TCP dump is also a CLA based. Now, when you install your Wireshark, that uh, T-Shark will automatically install in your system. Okay, so now how to install it? So for Windows, basically as it is a cross platform, so let's see for the Windows. For Windows, just search for Wireshark download. Okay, and then go to the official website, wireshark.org. And then from here, download the website. Okay, Wireshark according to your architecture of your system. Okay, for the Mac, now for the Linux, okay, if your system is Debian, like if your system is Debian based, then you have to write apt get install Wireshark. So basically in the Linux, the, in the Debian based, the Wireshark is pre-installed, like in Parrot OS, in Kali Linux, and Ubuntu. Okay. But uh, if, you, if you talk about Red Hat, You have to search for first you have to search for the Wireshark. So you have to type VM search Wireshark. Okay, and then VM install Wireshark. Okay. So this is the like in the Red Hat, you have to install the Wireshark externally. Okay. No. So the interface of the Wireshark is a bit complex. So let's make it simple. See, it's just the perspective, like how you are viewing the interface. Okay. So let's open it. Okay. 
Okay, so this is the interface. First, here we have all the adapters listed. Okay, like the network adapters in which you can listen on. Okay, so there's a line like uh, so if you want to find your network adapter like in which you are listening on then you can go for cmd and there you can search for if config so ip config if you are on windows okay and if you are in linux then you have to search for I, if config okay enter and then there's a wait a minute so here's your wi-fi adapter okay like there's a menu adapter when you see the ip address then you can confirm it. okay i'm listening on the adapter number wi-fi then you can double click on it and then the analysis will be start okay before that let's see some in like some more elements of the wireshark okay let me open this file okay so first with the main window Okay, the basic, the main window, when you open your washer, the main window, window will appear. Okay, in this main window, means this one, this is known as the packet list. Okay, this is, this one is known as the packet list. This, this is known as the packet list, this one, okay, the bottom one. And then there's a, another window that is another pane that is packet bytes. Okay, so here's the packet bytes. One second. Okay, so this is the packet bytes. So we have the packet list, we have the packet details, and then we have the packet bytes. And then we have, see, and then we have the packet diagram. Okay, so in the Wireshark, only three pages can be available at a time. So you can go to edit preferences. Okay, in the Linux or in the Mac OS, where, like uh, this preferences option will come inside the file option. Okay, and in the windows, it will come under edit. So preferences and then the layout. In this layout, pane number three, you have to click on packet diagram. Click on it and click on okay. Okay, then view and click on the packet diagram. Okay, see, the packet bytes will be grayed out. So packet diagram and the three, see. Click on one particular packet. Okay, so this is the packet diagram. So at a time, three windows can be appear or three pages can be appear at a time. The packet list, the packet details, and the packet diagram or the packet bytes. It's your choice what you want to appear. Okay. So we have the packet list. This one. This is the packet list, the packet details, and the packet bytes and the packet diagram. Okay. So in the packet list, we have multiple objects. Like we have first name. So first number. Let me minimize this. Yeah. First we have number, then time, then let me remove this. Okay. Yeah. So name number, time, source, source IP address, and destination IP address, information. Okay, when you first open your Y chart. Like uh, references. It will look like this. Okay. Okay. This was simple. Like, let me remove this extra columns. Here, yeah. so we have the number, we have the time. We can see from here more clearly. Okay, we have the number, we have the time, we have the source, source IP, destination, and then protocol, which is used, length, length of your packet, okay, and then information. So this is the, like the basic information about a particular packet. Then there is number, it's just like the serial number. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, that's it. Number, and then we have time. Time means the time that you are capturing. Okay, time can be like you can change the time format easily that we will see source source ip address 
destination IP address, protocol that is used during the transmission, and then length of your packet, and then information of your packet, a little bit, a short information of your packet. Okay. Then inside packet details, we have some information like the like the detail overview about your packet. When you click on this, we have the packet details. Okay. Now inside packet details, you can see there is some information that is inside the square brackets. Okay. You can see this information that is inside inside the square brackets. That is that uh, information is generated by the Wireshark itself. It is not the headers and trailers of the packet. It is the information that is generated by the Wireshark. Okay. So you can see generated fields. So whatever you see, like whatever information you see inside the square brackets, this is all generated by the Wireshark so that we can analyze it in more detail. Okay, so Wireshark is uh, making my uh, like making our work easy. Okay, and then we have this blue link. When you click on this, this will redirect you to request. So basically, this packet is a response and uh, request in packet number one. So this is packet number two. Okay, so when you click on this link, this link is also generated by the Wireshark. Okay, remember this is not the packet headers or this is not like come from uh, comes with a packet this is just the information generated by the wireshark okay then we have the square brackets and then when you click on this link this will redirect you to the request number one that will show you okay so this is the link this is the this is an acknowledgement to the segment in frame number one one four five okay so when you click on this and double click it will move to U1145 and then when you click okay and then when you double click again so it will move to that packet okay so this like the information inside the square brackets are generated by the Wireshark itself then we have the packet details it is not so important like if you are analyzing for the malware then you can make use of it otherwise it is of no use like if you are troubleshooting some network okay in the if you if you want to troubleshoot the network, then we only need the packet details and the packet list. Okay, so packet bytes will show the uh, packet details in hexadecimal format, and then we have the packet diagram. So inside packet diagram, we have the like a full overview of your packet. It is for particular packet, not for the not of our whole network. This is for the particular packet. Okay, so when you click on it, so. Here is a detail of your packet diagram. We can, uh, we will learn to read it like in the latest sessions. Okay. After that, we have the status bar. Okay. So when you start your washer, the status bar will show you ready to load or capture. So like the status bar is ready to load or capture our traffic. Then at study, you have the packets and the profile is the default. Now, what is this profile? Suppose uh, there's a PC in your company, okay, and uh, the same PC or the same Wireshark tool is used by like many different different domains people. So, like uh, for example, the security analyst is using the same Wireshark tool in the same PC, and the network ad administrator is using the same PC for the same for capturing the same uh, traffic. Okay, so this profile is for different different people. So, like if you uh, if you like, let me give an example. There's a network administrator and there's a security engineer. Okay, and there's an application engineer. Okay, they are they are these they are using the same PC and the same Wireshark tool. Okay, so basically Wireshark is a cross platform and it is like a general purpose, so everyone can use it. So by creating the profile of each and everyone, like the network administrator creates creates its own profile for the network traffic for network administrator profile. The security engineers will create their own profile so that uh, whenever they come back to record or to capture the packet, they will just choose their profile and then start capturing the packet. Same as with the application developers, they create their own profile and when they come back to record the traffic or like uh, when they come back to analyze the traffic and they can choose their own profile and they can start capturing the packets or analyzing the same. Okay, so profile is like for the different different people so using the same Vasha in the inside same PC. Okay. And then we have the status file like if you load it, if you, your 
like uh, if your uh, washer case will fill with a packet then we have the packet number of packet used 500 and displayed 500 why these are displayed at packets see we have the packets that the overall packets inside your network that is 500 and displayed means 500 so here displayed means when we apply the filter this will filter out the result and what a filter is like see suppose there's a network like you are capturing a traffic like you have let's say 100 packets okay suppose 100 packets in your network and you only want to analyze tcp packets okay and the number of and the number of tcp packets inside your network is only 10 okay so for analyzing the tcp packets you first have to analyze the 200 packets okay you have to keep on scrolling so for this you can just modify you just filter out the packets that you want to analyze it okay like you can write the like you can write tcp in the filter box and the whole like the whole packet list will be more like uh, randomized and only it will show the 10 packets that is of tcp packets okay and then status bar will show you that uh, displayed that, that uh, number of packets is equal to 100 and then displayed only 10 okay okay which is of tcb and at the right left hand side it will also show you that uh, we have you have applied tcp filter okay likewise this okay when you apply any filter this will display here and the packets etc and all the details okay so status for me is for showing how many packets are there and uh, how many are displayed okay and the filter that you have applied okay so this is the packet list packet bytes packet diagram this is one okay now you can add as many column as you want but uh, in the starting we will keep it simple okay we will just put like a few columns okay so okay, that we can analyze it more easier now then we have the menu bar okay here we have menu bar the main, main toolbar the filter toolbar and then we have the packet list packet details packet bytes packet diagram and the status bar so what is the menu the main and the filter so in the menu toolbar we have the file added view these options in the main toolbar we have these icons okay these icons so that we can like click on it and then we can like this is for the start capturing okay this is for the stop capturing this one to restart the capturing this is for the options in these options we have all the like if we have all the network adapters listed this is like if you want to filter out your output file you can easily filter out that we will see this is for open if you want to open any file okay pre existing file okay and this is save as close reload if you want to reload any file this is for the find packet if you want to find a particular packet go back go back to one packet okay that is like if you click on this we have a go back option and go back okay and then we have the go forward you can also use that upper arrow key and the down arrow key in, in your keyboard okay. then we have the go to packet go to a specific packet go to first packet go to last packet then auto scrolling live capture when there's a when your live capture is going on you can just turn it on so that uh, it will auto scroll to the last packet okay colorize so this is colorizing rules okay it means your packet let me show you okay so here we have the colors inside the packet list when you remove this color so we have all whitish here and when you apply this we have the colors okay this is the coloring rules like if you have any error error in your inside your traffic then it will show in this like in the black background and then like arp packets of like a little orange color i see a packet of pink color like this this is a default coloring rules of the visor you can modify it and you can add your own colors like from the view the coloring coloring rules okay so this is the default coloring rules of the you can add it you can modify it okay you can add your own color rules that we will see that's why wireshark is so flexible in nature okay then this is zoom out zoom in and then normal size and then resize columns like fit into the screen so we have the zoom in and then we have the zoom out 
okay and then fit into screen okay like uh, and then yeah so okay so let me zoom in even you can resize your columns okay by expanding it okay no this is the main toolbar then get the filter inside filter you can in like in the filter toolbar you can add your filter okay you can bookmark your filter like if you want to use a filter frequently then you can add it and then you have to clear if you want to clear out apply you can, you can press enter or you can click on apply to apply a particular filter and then reset if you want to see the recent filters add button see if you want to add your buttons like uh, suppose you, you are analyzing a network suppose you are analyzing a traffic on a daily basis okay and you have http packets like you have one filter let's say rv.eddr Okay, so suppose we have this filter. Okay, this is a long filter. And on the daily basis, you are analyzing the network. Okay, and uh, you have to apply this filter frequently. So, so, so you can add this filter as a button. Okay, with the help of this plus option. Okay, here you can click on, let's apply one filter. Let's say TCP. Enter. Then you can click on plus option here. And then you can name your filter. Let's say TCP only. And then filter and then command if you want to edit. You click on okay and then here you can click on tcp okay so we now just click on the button and your filter will be okay so you don't need to write it like as a whole okay so this is a filter tool and then the last menu In the menu you will choose like file edit view go okay so let's understand this one moment so in the file you have some basic options okay, like you uh, you have to have, like if you want to save one file, if you want to open pre existing file, okay, if you want to merge some files, okay, and uh, save as etc. Et and then edit in the edit, we have like find packet, find next packet, find previous packet, and then we have here we have the preferences option and the configuration profiles. If you want to add a profile, if you want to remove some profiles, etc. Okay, and then in the view, we have the main tool, like if you like this is for the interface, like what items or what pane you want to visible in your main screen or what you want to remove it okay so we have, we have, if you remove this main toolbar see main toolbar is disappear same as with the this filter box view remove this filter box okay, so filter box is removed then let's add it back and then for the status one we have to packet list if you remove this packet list so we have just packet list and then packet diagram so packet list Okay, so here we have the zoom, we have the time display format. You can change your time display format from here. Okay. And then here we have the coloring rules, etc. Then that will be see one by one. In the go option, we have the same like go to packet, go to a specific packet. Then next packet, previous packet, first packet, last packet, etc. Okay. And then the capture in the capture options, we have this main option. Okay, we can even click on here for the options. And then we can also click here from here capture. Okay, start, stop, etc. And then the analyze the other display filters. So for a Wireshark, it has its own like default filters. You can add a filter also, and you can remove your filter. You can remove any filter, and you can modify any filter. Okay, then I'll select it. Okay, and then we have the statistics. Inside this, we have multiple options. So we have the features of the variation. This is these are these are the main features of the variation, which makes the analysis analysis more comfortable. Okay, that we will see, etc. So now we will continue in next session. Okay, so if you want to see the course content of the variation, then you can go to the website. Genting. Okay, so you can search for Gentech networks. Okay, here you can go to the website. Okay, so it's a network training with the and we have many courses. You can, if you want to see the course content of any course, course uh, courses, you can click on the course and then you can see the code. Okay, so that's it for today. So now we will continue in the next session. Thank you.